Hello, I'm Austin McCourt and welcome back to the University Report. I'm here with Sue Traxler, the Chief Information Officer here at Platteville. And we're asking a little bit about the 365 system that just dropped in today. So um, could you explain a little bit about your job here on campus? Sure. I am the Assistant Vice Chancellor for Technology on campus, also known as the Chief Information Officer. I've been on campus about a year and a half. And my role is really to guide information technology decisions across campus, to be involved in strategic planning, and to evaluate some of the technologies and services and needs that we have on campus. I make recommendations for appropriate technology on campus. We develop policies and procedures around technology to make sure our servers and our systems are safe and secure. And that we, I also help ensure that we have the appropriate staffing and technology training for that staffing to help make sure that we're supporting our technology needs on campus. All right, sounds like a lot of work. It then. is a little busy, lots of meetings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Leading, meetings. Uh, well, could you uh, tell us a little bit about the Microsoft 365 uh, system that was just taking place? Sure, sure. Our old system was Zimbra, and we had Zimbra for about five years. And it was t the contract was up and ready for renewal. And it was time to take a look at what our options were. Every so many years, for many systems, you should take a look at the landscape and to see what others are using and, and where is industry at with technology because technology changes so fast. So our existing system had servers on campus and we had staff in IT that supported them. Uh, we had licensing costs and it was uh, time to take a look at what some of the other UW schools were doing. Um, for the most part, many of the other UW schools are using Microsoft 365 as a hosted solution. Uh, when you go to a hosted solution, you don't have to always pay for the email and the calendaring and the server storage space. And so um, we did an evaluation starting last fall and took a look at Zimbra, uh, having hosting it on campus, Zimbra hosted off campus, as well as Microsoft's solution and Google's solution. Now Microsoft has had some better features. We get larger mailboxes with it, so we get 50 gig of storage space for our mailboxes. We end up with uh, the OneDrive, which is one terabyte of disk storage space. And we also have the ability to uh, hand out off Office 2013 uh, up to five different licenses for all of the students and eventually starting in December we'll be able to offer that for faculty and staff as well for home use. All right, so. all right. and uh, what types of things do you think the students will need to remember when using this program uh, from mm -hmm. changing over from Zimber and everything? Sure, I would say uh, you know it's good to remember that you need to log in with the long version of your username so it's the username at uwplat.edu you need to note that you can get at it anywhere, just like Zimbra. It's really not that much different for students because students get technology and run with it very quickly. But you get a network storage space. You um, end up with those home user licenses, which are important. Those are probably the highlights. Okay. And yeah. is there any place, if students don't quite understand, uh, is there any place we can go or any events mm -hmm. that take place to help us learn about this? That's a great question. So in a, we have training available for faculty, students, and staff. And that training, right now we've scheduled 10 days of training, two days before the cutover this weekend, and another eight days through this week and next week. So you could sign up for that training. But in addition to that, we have our ITS help desk, which is in the library. There's a configuration station in the student center, uh, where if you are interested in getting it set up on your mobile device, you might bring your mobile device to the syncing station or the configuration station in the student center. And of course, uh, online resources include uh, our knowledge base. So there's lots of articles that have been posted in the knowledge base. Microsoft has a fairly decent help interface built into their program. So clicking on the question mark in the top right corner. And then we also subscribe to a software called Atomic Learning. And Atomic Learning is online tutorials and training for all faculty, students, and staff. Atomic Learning has many little snippets or modules on uh, Office 365, so that's another option as well. So I think there's lots of options. Oh, right, awesome, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Now, talking about the layout of uh, Office 365, it's a bit different from Zimbra. And mm -hmm. is there any way that users could personalize it or touch it up a bit to mm -hmm. their liking? At yeah, all? that's a great question. Now, keep in mind there's two versions of Office 365. There's the web interface that almost all students are using, but then there's also the desktop interface. 
And so uh, you could install the desktop interface. That gives you a little more customization where the layout changes uh, go. But in the web interface, you can um, do a small amount of customizing, but not a significant amount. Keeping in mind, this is a you know, very large vendor uh, delivered solution, and so customization is somewhat limited. But there are some customization op options. Calling the help desk or stopping in might be a good next step. Okay. If somebody wants to do that. All right. And any students who haven't registered yet, um, is there a process they have to go through to register, mm -hmm. either home use or? So I want to clarify There's by what you mean by register. Okay. So everybody's mailbox is converted over this weekend. So all of your email and all of your calendaring have moved from Zimbra to Office 365 over the weekend. The home use part, being able to use Word and Excel from home, there you move, you, you can register, you don't, it's not really a register, you're really downloading that application okay. and logging in. And because you are a student here on campus and have an account, once you get into the Microsoft Office 365 application, there's an option in there to be able to go ahead and um, kind of register and then download your licensing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, great. And yep. is there anything else about uh, Office 365 that you would like to inform us about? Or? Well, I think it's important to know, you know, new software isn't necessarily hard to use. It's just different. Uh, so keeping in mind that although we're going through a change or a transition, change is hard, but it's often good for us. It um, gives us an opportunity to look at uh, how we're using our email and our calendaring just in a different way. Uh, the, the applications are very similar. They're just using the different technologies. I don't think there's much else, no. All right. Well, thank you very much, Sue, for You're stopping welcome. on the University Report. I'm sure this helped a lot of our viewers out, and uh, I know it's helped me. So, Good. Well, yes. thank you for inviting me. Yes. Yep. All right. Uh, thanks again for stopping on the University Report, and we'll be right back after this.